in the Civil War uniform, so this is something that really a lot of folks have been enjoying already. They've been talking about it for the last couple of weeks, and it's been growing each and every year. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, we have, have a really good crowd uh, this year. Uh, the numbers of scouts are up. Uh, we had 440 school children yesterday go through the education stations. Um, registrations so far, like I said, it's, it's right around 450 that registered. I'm not sure everybody showed up. They were a little bit scared off by the weather forecast, but uh, the weather forecast there was wrong because it's great weather here. We got blue sky out there, a uh, little sunshine. Everything is dried up, and uh, we're looking to have everything go off on schedule. Terry, we've been hearing the cannons going off. Have there been skirmishes down there? Is that the reason for the cannons? I was great hearing the cannon fire. No, this this morning, um, up until 11:30 this morning, we're running the education program for the scouts and the public. And the cannon that you hear firing is uh, an artillery crew that shows the drill and loading and, and how the cannon is fired, and then they actually fire around down the street, not a ball, just the powder, <laughs> um, to uh, to show people what it's really like, and, and it adds to the effect. Um, and on the other end of town, uh, by the old school, um, is the, uh, the for the less squeamish is Dr. Annabelle with his uh, demonstration of taking off arms and legs and all of those things too. So we got a nice assortment. We've got uh, historical people. Uh, I think you already had an interview with the Christian Commission. Uh, there's some other historical people. I don't know if you saw President Lincoln walking around or not when he's here. Um, he wasn't supposed to be, but he actually. Uh, disengaged himself from the event that he was supposed to be at this weekend and joined us instead. So I guess that gives you an idea of how a lot of people like this event. Well, it certainly does. And, and, and Terry, tell us a bit about the your uniform that, that you're wearing today. Okay, well, uh, for this weekend, um, I am a captain of the 136th Infantry. Uh, there will be four companies of troops on the street for the Indian Army this year. Uh, one of cavalry and three of infantry, um, and I have one third of the unit infantry under my command. Um, we are doing three different battles. Uh, Kessler's Cross Lanes is at 1 o'clock today. Uh, Blackburn's Ford is at 3.30 today. And then tomorrow at 1 o'clock, yes, at 1 o'clock, um, is uh, Drainsville. And unfortunately today, um, my side is not victorious, but we'll, we'll make up for it tomorrow. Live the fight another day. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, when we look at these battles that, that are selected, these are, the, are accurate battles that did take place. Where did this one take place? Um, Kessler's Cross Lanes was a small town in what's now West Virginia. It was part of the state of Virginia at the time in 1864. And it was a Union unit occupying the, the town that was surprised by a Confederate attack and driven from the town. And so that's what's going to happen in uh, the early part of the battle. Blackburn's Ford was one of the uh, early stages of the first battle of Bull Run, where General McDowell was pro probing the Confederates to find out where he might be able to cross Bull Run Creek. And, uh, tried at Blackburn's Ford, but was not successful in breaching the Confederate defenses. And then he decided to change his tactics and do the wheel that he actually used for, for Bull Run. And then Drainsville, again, was an 1861 battle. It was shortly after Ball's Bluff, and that was a, a small Confederate detachment that was out foraging, was surprised by a Union and routed and driven out of that time. When we look 